Okay, we have a render out and we are using the convert color space in the compositor as opposed to under the render options here, color management, setting our AGX color transform here. Now there are certain benefits to doing it in the actual compositor. The first one I really like is that if you are grading your image after the render, you can add the let's say your RGB curves after the color correction has been done. If you were to add it before the color correction, you can see up here in the waveform here, when you tweak things, let's say you wanna um, change the white point, right? You want, you want the whites to be almost 100% white. You can keep pushing here and you can see due to the gamma, we are compressing those highlights really, really high and we're never really getting close to the top. Um, and it, it's also a bit confusing, you know, you, if you're opening stuff in Photoshop and you want to add like an S curve, you think it's going to behave a certain way, but it doesn't. So if we remove that and put it after the fact, then we get something that is much more like if we were to grade an image in Photoshop. To the point where if I just remove these control points here and just select the very top point, the highlights here, we can drag it across and you can see in the waveform, we can choose where we want to our, our white point to be. So we can hit those highlights almost at the very top um, of our sRGB range here. And the same with the black points here. I don't really want to crush those down anymore because, you know, we have information uh, that's in the darker areas, but we can increase the contrast by adding a bit of a curve here. And you can see we got quite a nice image quite quickly and it's all very understandable uh, if we were to do the same before because we're working in the linear color space. It's just a bit confusing, uh, mainly in part because all the information is, is kind of bunched all the way up this end because you have all of these super whites which are up in this end and yeah we it's just it doesn't feel like a very elegant way to do it even if we were to scale it up for more granular control so the other benefit being if we were to save this image because I'm exporting as uh, an open exr with dwaa which in a lot of cases is significantly smaller than a PNG file. We can save the image. Let's do that now. Right, we have opened our EXR document in Affinity Photo. And as you can see, even without any color manager whatsoever, it looks pretty much like it did when we exported it out of Blender. In fact, we can just see the side by side here. Yep, looks pretty much the same. And if we were to go side by side with Blender and Affinity Photo, we can mimic the curves we used here in Affinity Photo. Let's do curves. So we bring the white point like that. Slight dip in the shadows here, and then a little bit of a boost in the highlights. You can see it behaves pretty much the same way. So I like to use this technique in Blender, mainly because it's very easy to hand over the exported render files if you're incorporating it into like a sequence into an After Effects comp or into DaVinci Resolve. Yes, those programs can do color management and you can use the same uh, OCIO color profile that Blender uses, but it's sometimes just easier to for, for a third party editor or a motion designer to just be able to open it up, not have to worry about color management at all and just see everything in there in the native sRGB space.